world may have been focused on new horizons this week as it traveled past Pluto, but for Britain's space industry, there was just as much excitement about what is happening back on planet Earth. Business is booming, and the future for making money in space has never looked brighter. The development of small, low-cost satellites and arrival of private sector launch services is making space accessible to a whole new generation of entrepreneurs. Hundreds turned up in Liverpool this week for the industry's biannual trade fair, where they heard that, despite having one of the lowest state-funded space budgets in the developed world, the UK is still punching above its weight globally. Thanks to its long history in telecommunications satellites, Britain has 11.2% of the market for operating space vehicles and a 10.3% share in the applications derived from the data gathered by satellites. The UK has set itself ambitious targets to increase its share of the space market from 6.5% today to 10% by 2030. To get there, it will need entrepreneurs like Craig Clark, chief executive of Glasgow-based Clyde Space. In less than a decade, Clyde has moved from startup to trailblazer in the manufacture of microsatellites, spacecraft small enough to hold in your hand. Very interesting time in the UK at the moment for the space industry. We've got lots of inward investment from, from companies from around the world that are moving to the UK to take advantage of this momentum that we've seemed to have built up in growth, um, which has been a, as a result of several years of effort from industry and government uh, funding specific areas of, of the space industry and technology development and also encouraging new companies to start up. Our business is growing so fast, the market's growing at least 50% per year and we are really doing our best to keep pace with that but last year we grew by 50% and this year we expect to grow by about 100%. The potential for space to drive wider economic growth has reignited the UK government's interest in the sector. Productivity per employee is three times the UK average. Exports as a percentage of turnover are twice the overall level. And at 8.8% per year since 2000, growth has outpaced the wider economy even during the depths of recession. Government space spending, which fell sharply post-2010, has begun to recover and Britain is now one of the biggest contributors to the European Space Agency. But its interest is unashamedly commercial, and the focus is on the marketable applications that will come from the thousands of satellites that are due to be launched over the coming years. In all of the other sectors of the UK economy, there are many, many applications that could be using space data to make sure that uh, they, you know, they, they become uh, growth for the UK. So we're talking you know, agriculture, we're talking financial markets where you need uh, the precision timing that comes by space to time financial transactions. There's huge applicability in the public sector. You know, if you can track uh, productivity where people are, you can collect things like bins more easily. And you know, it's, it's, it's endless, the, the, the different ways that space can be used. This mercantile approach has raised some concerns in Europe about Britain's commitment to traditional space spending. UK seems to be oriented uh, and focused uh, more on the business part of you, meaning return of investment for a certain project. This is very good, but I would also advocate that also uh, UK is looking to the other parts of the innovation chain, meaning that we have to uh, develop in Europe and to maintain the full chain of innovation coming from fundamental research um, through uh, applied research, and uh, technology development finally to some products in the market. The industry is also asking whether the government's targets are achievable given the severe skills shortage in the UK. Alan Bond is an old-fashioned British inventor. For almost 30 years, he and his colleagues at Reaction Engines have been working on an engine capable of driving a plane from runway to space and back again, which could potentially make Elon Musk's SpaceX rocket redundant. The design is backed by the European Space Agency, the UK Space Agency, and the technology has been vetted by the US Air Force. Mr. Bond is a keen supporter of the government's renewed focus on space, but he worries that a lack of talent could hold other innovators like him back. One of the biggest challenges facing the whole industry is actually finding people with the requisite skills to actually achieve the growth targets that are going to be needed. So in every presentation I go to, not just here, but other conferences, one of the, the uh, uh, repeating sort of statements that we hear, however, we have got to do something about uh, 
uh, education, getting the people in there. But overall, there's a buzz in Britain's space community that hasn't been felt for years. The UK is about to send its first astronaut to the International Space Station, and the rover that will land on Mars in 2018 is being developed and built in the UK. The buzz is reaching the investment community, and the UK's commercial focus is being closely watched by the financiers who hope one day to make their fortunes in space. The economics of space are changing. Smaller, cheaper satellites and private rocket launchers are bringing down the cost of doing business in space. The UK has ambitions to take a bigger share of that market opportunity. But in times of austerity, that might require even greater government support. Investing in space has never been cheap, but the returns could be astronomical. Peggy Hollinger, Financial Times in Liverpool.